previously in the Brotherverse. You want to talk some higher stakes? Let's go to the steakhouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this game is pretty simple. I'm going to let this boggle out of its cage, and you have to catch him. Your unseen servant reaches into Nico's pocket and pulls out the blue card, and you dive bomb into the end zone with the boggle. Whee! And you guys yeah. win. Yeah, I didn't catch your name. I would rather not tell you. It looks like there's another door on the far end of the field, and he swipes a card and he enters inside. Ultimately, we need the four key card door, but there's got to be more of these single key card doors. You guys exit the building and back into the night of the festival. Well, Happy New Year, guys. Yay. Oh, Happy New Year. We made it. Can you, like, think about it? Like, we released the first episode almost exactly one year ago, like January 5th or something like that, I think was the first episode. Really? First and second? Yeah. No, we've been really going at it. Well, one year and second brother first. Mm Mm-hmm. Orc has glasses now to show that time has passed. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking the exact same thing. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Yes, and Puff has a mustache. (laughs) (laughs) A lot has changed for season two. I think he might have always had a mustache. (laughs) A pustache. Yeah, as far as other people know, you might have always had a mustache. (laughs) It's true. Actually, Puff does have a mustache. He yeah. is the only oh, one yeah. of you that actually oh, does really have a does. mustache. It's more of like a Dolly or Snidely Whiplash uh, Snidely mustache. Yeah. Not, not my Snidely Whip Snatch. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so you guys have just finished catching the boggle and meeting Nico, and he just kicked you out of the uh, hookah bar that was attached to the boggle playing field. It is now late late night slash early morning in the city of vanguard i'm gonna say it's like 1 a.m to 2 a.m right now and the festival is shutting down for the night so you guys have to figure out what to do until the festival starts tomorrow morning which is going to be around like 8 or 9 a.m okay because we've stayed up this long (laughs) we didn't see the sun sun come up (laughs) yeah we was like prime time to sneak around but i am tired yeah yeah Oh, yeah, you could use a rest. Yeah, I kind of want my spell slots back. and Yeah, same here. Chris is hurting. <laughs> yeah, and um, you guys are basically on, like, a cobblestone street right now. There's a couple buildings. You're basically in the middle of the city of Vanguard because this festival takes place in the city. So mm-hmm. you're on, like, a cobblestone path that's, like, uh, if you remember, the city of Vanguard is kind of, like, built up the side of the mountain. So you're on, like, a third tier of roads that kind of are built up the side of this mountain. So you're kind of looking down through the trees. All the lights for the festival are being like shut off right now. And the uh, pathways are pretty barren. There's a few people like kind of lazily walking around, maybe going back to their homes or tents or whatever else. Uh, so the streets are pretty barren right now. Is it cold? Uh, it's not that bad out, actually. It's uh, it's summer in Mardinia right now. And so it's it's pretty comfortable out. Can find a nice alley and curl up with a bedroll (laughs) oh yeah i do have that that's right oh i don't have one anymore because i think i lost it that time i fell off my raven (laughs) but i'm pretty small i can just double up with one of you (laughs) i actually don't think that i have one either (laughs) i have triple bedroll in it (laughs) (laughs) room for three so cute All right. Well, yeah, we're going to go find a place to lie down. Or we can just ask one of these passerbys if they know, like, the best chance of a spot that might have room. Sure. Go for okay. it. Okay. Hey, hey just... passerby. Okay. So you, you see a couple of, like, uh, what look to be, like, female druids walking by you. They've got some, like, long dreadlocks, and they're just walking down the path. And uh, you you call out to one of them, and they say, like, hey, 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 what's up, guys? Uh, we, uh, came to this festival not really knowing the, the, the sleeping situation. Do you know if there's anywhere, like, an inn or somewhere that might have rooms, uh, uh-huh. for, for hmm. dumb folks that then bring bedding? <laughs> I think, I think it's going to be really hard to get a, uh, 
a bed in any establishment at this time of night. I mean, the the festival is like really, really popular. Mm. I would say your your best bet is to go by uh if you go down the hill here and to the left there's a giant forest area where people have like hammocks set up um you might be able to just like camp in the trees because that's just kind of like unlimited space if if that were your camping yeah yeah that's where we're going right now (laughs) okay (laughs) (laughs) we we just walk together that's cool yeah yeah let's go that's where we're heading right now so uh she uh like walks in front of you and uh, she's like, oh, my, my name is Layla, by the way. And this is my friend, Carrie. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi. So did you did you guys go see any shows today? We saw did the we? Uh, Sprite races. Ooh, Sprite races. Yeah, I lost a lot of money there. Did you? Oh, really? We won a bunch of money. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Like well, I think you're gonna like this hammock area. It's it's pretty cool. There's so many people, and you just you kind of just kind of claim your own spot wherever you can in the branches. Where do we get hammocks? Oh, I don't know. Do you guys have any like cloaks or anything? You can just kind of like tie up with rope. Ropes are specialty. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you should be fine. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. So she uh, guides you down the mountain. And you uh, keep going, and you you walk past a few areas. You see like a petting zoo on your left, uh, where all the animals are sleeping. And um, you walk past like an empty stage, and you make your way to like this forest. And you look up, and there's just hammocks, just all wound up in the trees, like several stories high, like like ten or twelve hammocks on top of each other, leading up into the trees. And uh, Layla and Carrie like take out their packs, and they start um, pushing like pulling hammocks out and hang them up in uh, like the third level of a tree. They kind of just scale up and, and hang them up. And she's like, it's like, well, good night, guys. Hope you guys find a spot. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. So you see lots of areas where there's like two or three levels and there's like space up above that. Um, and there's some on like the very, very edges of the trees where um, it's kind of closer to the path where no one seems to be at the bottom levels. So I guess we got to like, crochet a hammock <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with the floor the yeah. forest floor <laughs> probably better yeah i've got my bed roll yeah i'll just grab my i have like costumes and clothes and i guess i'll just wrap myself up in the <laughs> and lay down in the ground <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold, like, the end of my hemp rope to my chest and then just spin in circles until it cocoons me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to hang upside down? <laughs> like, No, I just, I'm, I'm going to keep spinning around until it completely wraps around me, and then I'll just fall over and lay down. <laughs> so you're using your rope as a blanket. Yes, <laughs> Like a really exactly. tight blanket. Okay. <laughs> I want to use, so I don't have to climb up high, I'm going to use my bedroll and some rope and tie one end to a tree on a lower level mm-hmm. and then tie the other end to my immovable rod so I can make my own space. Oh, Ooh, smart man. Clever. Good idea. <laughs> All right, you're definitely able to do that and you have a little makeshift hammock that's uh, like a little small for you just because you're a big dude, but you're able to like kind of comfortably lie in it with your, your legs hanging out of it. Mm-hmm. All right, well, you've all picked very peculiar sleeping arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're able to, uh, like, lie down and you look up and the the moon is, um, like, almost full over Vanguard and you can see the stars through the trees and all the lights in the festival have gone out and so you fall asleep to the, the sounds of, like, birds and crickets in the air. Um, so you're able to sleep through the night fine, so you get to replenish all your health points and your spells and all of those things. Uh, and you uh, wake up with the sun uh, starting to peer through the trees. So you wake up and you see that some people are starting to take down their hammocks and things and um, are starting to head back into the festival for day two of the Festival of Light. <sighs> Good morning. <laughs> Oh, help! Morning. <laughs> I can't get out of here. Help me. <laughs> Just grab an end of Puff's rope and pull <laughs> to unroll him like a yo-yo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. 
<laughs> all right, so you guys are all up and at him. Uh, now you put all your stuff away. Uh, where would you like to go? I don't know about you guys, but I, I actually want to catch a show today. <laughs> Among yeah. other, you know, important things, I'm just gonna get to do. <laughs> yeah, wait, we 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 got a brochure from Keezy uh, mm-hmm. at the kiosk. Can we like pull it out yep. and check to see if there's any sort of like like what the events are in the morning for day two? Yeah, yeah. So there are a few things happening in the festival today. There is a little theater show that tells the history of Vanguard and the Light Crystals. Uh, you have a few uh, people playing music today. Uh, you have Ariana Pequeño. Uh, <laughs> so you have Seven Griffins and uh, <laughs> new, new Kids on the Block, which is a, a band of goats. And <laughs> Elton John is headlining tonight. What? Like the Elton John? Yeah. I not don't know a, if you guys remember, but Elton oh yeah, he's, there he's was an be episode canon. in the very beginning that Elton John is canon. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna be Sans glasses because they've been stolen. Yeah, uh. <laughs> Puff, Puff is Elton John now. Keep those <clears throat> hidden. Look at me, I am Elton John now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How wonderful life is! <laughs> now you're in the world. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's quite the lineup yeah. yeah and so there's some other things that you can um go see as well like i said there's the, there's the theater thing there's the petting zoo that you guys walk by and there's also some like swag stores where you can go and get like festival swag swag okay that all sounds awesome none of it sounds helpful <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which one of those are we most likely to run into gangsters at? Mm. Or we could just go back to that area, the uh, the pipe place, steakhouse. Yeah. The other thing, I don't know how we'd go about this, but we could also try an alternate tactic and try to find the the keepers. Is that what we yeah. are? The people who disappeared. Right. See if see if we can find that trail. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know where we'd start for that. Yeah, I guess I don't know if we if they've been like kidnapped or anything, so it'd be a tough find, but we don't know anything about them, do we? Yeah, all all you know is that there were there are two operatives that came to Vanguard and they were getting like regular intel from them and then they basically like disappeared off the face of the earth. Hmm. Maybe they just were really enjoying the festival and just like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they they had been there for like a few weeks before the festival. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be like Apocalypse Now. They're like running their own cult in the uh, Rectrons now. <laughs> like they've assimilated. Yeah. I thought I had seen that movie, but that leads me to believe I have not seen that movie. Oh, it's I great... was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I haven't actually seen, <laughs> seen that movie. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've, seen what you I've seen the sounds final like scene. a great plot point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys got to go see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So right do you listeners. Let's yeah. let's take a break and go watch Apocalypse Now. We'll yeah. reconvene in three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. If for no other reason than to get your reference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come back. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Good one. <laughs> the next three hours of content are really going to build off Apocalypse Now, so you don't want to stop and listen to it right now. You're going to want to watch your, it. Got to go yeah. do your homework. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, of all the things... The theater show does sound interesting. Yeah, what and was that again? It's of the history of Vanguard, I think. Kind of oh. sounds like intel. That sounds important. Yeah, maybe. Also sounds like we might just make Eric <laughs> perform for an inordinate amount of time. Is it a puppet <laughs> show? Uh, you guys are not sure exactly. <laughs> ah, I hope it's a puppet show or an animatronics. No. <laughs> It's like Chuck E. Cheese, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a performance of Vanguard's history. Let's go there. I have no other lead. Okay. Okay. Let's make our way over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you guys follow the uh, the map and start walking through the festival, 
and you uh, you walk by one of the main stages, and it's pretty empty right now. It's too early for uh, things to be happening. Um, you see people, a lot of people, just like lying out in the grass, enjoying like the sunshine coming through in the morning. Um, and you eventually make your way to this like small stage, uh, and there are a bunch of people sitting out in the dirt in front of the stage, like awaiting for the show to start. And so um, you guys go and take a seat. And uh, just as you do, there's like um, you you look up and there's suddenly this like what appears to be like magical darkness sort of encompassing the area around the tent. Mm. So you see like the sun get blotted out and the trees start to disappear and you're sort of just uh, encompassed in this orb of darkness. But you can see kind of like stars up in the sky. You've kind of been uh, transported with everybody else sitting there to this sort of like. Uh, almost like a hologram of a setting. And so you see in front of you that the stage starts to disappear too in the darkness. And you see a little house appear um, on a landscape that kind of materializes in front of you. So it seems to be someone's creating like a um, like magical illusion to create this little show. So you're kind of like bird's eye view watching like a little town now with a little house. And you hear like a booming voice uh, come over. Uh, just it, it seems like it's surrounding you. It says like, "Ladies and gentlemen, please open your ears and your hearts, as we have a tale that will surely enlighten your soul." Long ago, in a time before you and me, there lived a poor man and his family. The man was a good father and husband, and at the dawn of each day, he ventured into the wood to hunt and gather. And each night he would return to his house with a meager meal to feed his wife and children. Despite their hardships, the family gave thanks to the heavens for the continued gift of each other's company. On a day like any other, the father said goodbye to his family and ventured out for the day's hunt. As night drew near, he spotted a large boar at the base of a ravine. Desperate not to return to his family empty-handed, he descended the rocky walls to get closer for a kill. But the father had grown weak from his day's journey, and despite his efforts, he fell into the ravine, bringing a shower of boulders upon himself. The father lay still, his body battered by the fall. He pleaded to the heavens, Please, help me. I am trapped and will surely perish. Without me, my family will have no one to provide for them. As the father prayed, a star passed in the night sky. The star knew of the man and his family, and felt great sorrow. The star did not wish for the man to die, so he broke a shard from his body and allowed it to fall to earth. The shard raced toward the ravine where the father lay, and pierced his heart. But the man did not die. Instead, he felt a tremendous light pulse through his weakened body. The man summoned his strength and lifted the boulders from his chest, not with his body, but with his heart. The star's gift had granted the man the same power that keeps the heavens in the sky. With the light in his heart, the man rose into the air, and like a shooting star raced back to his house where his family awaited. With a second chance at life, the man vowed that he would use his new gift to help others as the star had helped him. He became known for his nobility and righteousness, and the people throughout the land traveled to learn of his teachings. Generations passed and the descendants of this noble man were bestowed the same gift of the light. They built a great civilization that has lived in peace and prosperity for many years. That city is Vanguard. And today we still give thanks for the gift of the light here at the festival. We hope this story has touched your hearts. Now go forth and may the light be with you. Wow. Woo. <clears throat> cool. Bravo. Cool. Now you've now you've heard our exposition of the city. Please go and enjoy the rest of the festival. I, I want you. that levitation crystal. It sounds like a what's it called? Laputa? Laputa from a Laputa, Laputa? Ca- Castle yeah. in the Sky. It's like yeah. Laputa I don't know, 100 years before that movie when stuff was good. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wow, nothing bad could ever come from this type of technology. What could possibly go wrong? (laughs) (laughs) I have an inside joke. 
incoming every time. What? For some reason during that, Eric, whenever you were saying, talking about the house, I kept waiting for the, the guy to say, I'm going to go in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that that did not strike me as something to say. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end, maybe, he, he flew over to his house and said, I'm going to go in my house. Yeah, when he said he floated with the crystal, I just pictured him floating across I'm the screen gonna and going, go I'm going to go in my house. <laughs> is that worth explaining? Uh, yeah, I would say another I, reference that no one is going to get. I think we have to. <laughs> I think we have to, yeah. So when we were kids, we had this program called Authorware, which is... We used it as like a program for making like little animations. I think we've and... explained this before. Remember we talked about Detective Penguin and Pudgy? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, Detective Penguin and Pudgy was an animation that we made in Authorware. So there was another one that Ryan, you Dylan. created? It was Dylan? me. Was it Dylan? No, no, was me. It me. Yeah, Ryan was it? had House Mouse, yeah, but Dylan me. had the mouse that goes oh, into Oh, that's house. I thought it was House Mouse. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, but not into House Mouse. That yeah, House Mouse himself was a house. <laughs> We each had animated mice, cartoon mice. Guess where we got the inspiration for that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think our inspiration was simple polygons to draw. Well, that too. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking Mickey Mouse, but... Yeah. That's probably why they chose it too. It's like, hmm, three circles. That's yep. easy. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so no. I, Chris, had one named Mousy. Ryan had one whose body was shaped like a house named House Mouse. <laughs> He Eric also had one. To go in his house. Yeah, he was a house. He was a house. <laughs> I'm gonna go Eric. in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> he just black hole sucks into his. <laughs> Eric had one named Mountain Mouse that was chubby and his hair looked like a snow peaked mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dylan had one named Mouse, <laughs> who <laughs> liked to go in his house. <laughs> At the beginning of every mouse animation, he'd be standing outside of his house, and the inaugural line would be, I'm going to go in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you? Like and six? I, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. And shenanigans and, would ensue. And then he yeah. would go in his house. <laughs> yeah. There were hundreds of these, probably. Hundreds yeah, of there were literally hundreds of short animations. <laughs> Did you guys Those know? Pretty good. Dad just told me recently that Authorware, even like in 1995 or whatever, cost mm -hmm. like six thousand dollars. Wow! That and we program. had it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dad had it for like his work. We were using like a pretty high end program <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make, to make goddamn mouse, mouse cartoons. <laughs> yeah, which is great. <laughs> well, you know, Disney uses high powered animation to make mouse cartoons. So yeah, yeah. we're Same. pretty much <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> there was, I remember there was one of the episodes of the mouse one. Wait, Dylan, uh, when, when he did not go in his house? No, <laughs> no, no, he did go yeah, in his M. house. M. Night shyamalan it. <laughs> he said, I'm going to go in my house, went into his house, and then said, I'm going to watch a movie. And he put like a VHS in the VHS player because this was the 90s. And <laughs> uh, it came up and then Chris made like the first 10 minutes of Mystery Men, but as mice oh, yeah. that were animated. Wait, that oh, was yeah. Part so of was an like, episode of Mouse. It was it? part of an episode mouse? of Mouse where like <laughs> there was nothing to lead you to believe that this is just going to be watching Mystery Men as mice. But <laughs> What? Yeah. You don't remember that? <laughs> No, I don't Man. remember that at all. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just like line for line, almost shot for shot, as good as it's we like, could do. It. Yeah, mouse just mouse deception <laughs> show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, mis show mystery mice. Show. <laughs> Any short films we make from here on out, or features, or anything, should start with mouse saying, "I'm gonna go in my house," and then putting a yeah. VHS. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the movie is just mystery men. Yeah. yeah, and I think it ends with it's like ten minutes of Mystery Men, and then it just comes back to me and goes, "Wow, that was a good movie." <laughs> you didn't even watch the whole thing. Damn, <laughs> we didn't have the patience to make a two-hour film. <laughs> well, that's fair. We were like ten, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> Gosh, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna bring us back to fantasy reality now. Um, <laughs> And so, I don't even remember why. How did we get into this conversation? I'm because the man with the crystal was going to go in his house. Oh, that's right. You guys went to the theater show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. So yeah, you guys are, are done with the uh, theater show and have learned a little bit more about the like perceived history of the city of Vanguard. The mythology of it. That was pretty cool. good, but it would have been better with mice. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you tell the uh, the director that. Yeah, I'll uh, pass my thoughts along. My yeah. suggestion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I had directed this. If we oh, animate mice. that sequence, we just need to make it a mouse episode. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty easy. It's not that far off from a mouse episode, no. in all honesty. Okay. Uh, that didn't seem very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> to our quest to find Rectrons. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yeah, but now I want this le- levitation crystal. I'm oh, guessing yeah. it might be real. Well, there's not just one of well, them, right? It's it's every piece of the crystal that they oh, mined. Really? Yeah, I think it's that like they were chipping off pieces of the uh thing and they all have this like levitation i bet power should we where are these crystals we should go find them i bet they're heavily guarded maybe in like a gift shop basically (laughs) like all the real all the crystals are kind of you you guys do know that like the crystals are used to make like the technological aspects of the city so there's like street lights that are like powered by these crystals um, mm-hmm. You've heard that the Rectrons are working on like weapons and levitation technology for the Guardians specifically. So you know that like the technological adva- advancements in the city are sort of powered by these light crystals. Oh, yeah, I knew all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just checking to see if you guys knew that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Is there a crystal mine somewhere, or a crystal bank? The crystal bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been like millennia, right? It's probably not going to be as easy as just like walking into a mine. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to. I'm oh. wondering. There's got to be like a a Rectron crystal uh, deposit somewhere. My guess would be that it's True. maybe behind that door that Mystery Hooded Man went through. That seems like yeah. it might be like their layer back there. And that was just a single key card door, right? Yep. Yeah, just mm-hmm. he went through there. So. Oh, yeah, we have that. I mean, should we just try to go in there? I'm not opposed. Sure. Um, do we all have... Th- we probably will want to disguise ourselves. Um, I have disguised self. Dylan, do you have... I can never remember. Do you have disguised self? No. Because I, I also have point. a disguise kit. I do have that. I have two, t- I have two disguise kits, actually. Oh. So, I mean, I feel like we could... What are they just like? They were in like hooded cloaks or black dark clothing or something? Yeah, they're wearing hoods. We might be able to like hood ourselves so we kind of blend in. I think that's fair with a disguise kit. Yeah. I have a fishing kit. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan and I will go in with hooded cloaks and you can just go with a pole <laughs> over your shoulder and be like, oh, just going fishing. fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know... <laughs> Wait, this isn't the fishing hole. (laughs) Yeah, so a disguise kit basically just contains like hair dye and small props that lets you create disguises and change your physical appearance. So, oh, so you could really fill out that uh, fisherman outfit. Yeah, (laughs) create like a a mustache, maybe some dried out hands to look like you've been working in the ocean your whole life. Yeah, a lot you can do with that. Yeah, vest and hat with lures in it. Be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're you're thinking like Montana fly fisherman. I was thinking like old timey fisherman. Oh yeah. <laughs> like retired banker fly fisherman. <laughs> I was thinking like Goofy in the Goofy movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect cast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're giving me. Are you guys giving me one of your disguise kits? Yeah. Take it. All right. I. Cloak myself up. Look Same. Very rectroni. Rectronic. And I use disguise self to uh, make myself cloaked in. Do we want to? Okay. We got to go to the place first. Right? Yeah, I guess I'll right. wait to I cast want... that spell because it only lasts for an hour. <laughs> I want everybody to roll a, a deception check. Uh, 10. 19. 17. So... Puff and Orc, you, uh, you're you very well disguised um, at this point. Uh, Yenry, you are short, less so. <laughs> it's like your like pink hair is like sticking out or something. There's, some, there's a little bit where it's like it's you're, you're not as well disguised as them. Cool. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Must be good do at we, this stuff. Do, do we know yeah. he's not as well disguised? Yeah, you 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 can't really. You have an inkling that he's not really pulling it off. <laughs> he's well, not owning I'll, it like you guys. I'll sneak behind Orc and just like hide behind him so that yeah. I'm okay. Better cool. hidden. I like that. The littlest Rectron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If this whole saving the world thing falls through, you can always write a children's book. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Won't you lead my heist tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we go back to the hookah lounge. Okay. So the hookah lounge appears uh, open. Uh, you open the door and you head inside, and there's like there's like one or two people inside that are smoking hookah, and there's still some like smoke animals running around. There's like a main like bartender who's like standing back there and he's just kind of like cleaning cups and uh, cleaning like hookah hoses and stuff like that. Uh, and so you uh, enter the room and he looks over at you and um, he doesn't seem to give you much mind. Uh, like he, he sees the electrons all the time and it seems like he it isn't really paying attention to you. Nice. All right. Go straight for the door. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so you Wait, guys. Uh, so this is the this is the door that leads into where we did the boggle chase, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So you guys uh, walk in the back, and uh, Puff, you take out your key card and swipe it in front of the door, and uh, it glows blue, and you hear it unlock, and you guys walk in, and you're uh, you walk into the boggle field. There's just like there's no one in there right now. So you walk across the field to your left towards the other door, and Puff, you reach into your pocket again and swipe the card. Well, hold on, and... hold on. Uh, okay. I, I wanted to bring this up. Prior to Sorry. us just walking through this door, I think this would be a great opportunity to do an initial squeezy run. Yes. <laughs> squeezy. Ooh. And we'll send him through the door first, and then we'll see what's Inaugural in there. Inaugural squeeze. Yes. <laughs> can you put, the... a t- put a tiny cloak on him? Let's see what <laughs> we can squeeze. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can. He's. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that would fill out the t- the whole top hat. Uh, you know, look he's got going. <laughs> a real mm-hmm. gentleman squeeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Just a regular weasel rectron rolling through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put a tiny cloak on him. <laughs> Good day, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, I say we just crack the door because I'm assuming he can't fit underneath, and we'll just we'll just send him in first. Okay, cool. So you uh, you pull out your tablet and Screezy, and you see a little button on your tablet that looks like a power icon. So you uh, press it, and you see uh, a little jolt of electricity go through Screezy, and he kind of goes like uh, like stiff a little bit. And you put him on the ground, and suddenly the uh, uh, screen on your tablet comes alive and you can see through his uh, eyes and you have like two little joysticks on the pad um, Hell that yeah. look like the, the controls I have one more can I use my brightness pebble my gem of brightness from any distance like could I tape this to Squeezy and just have it riding on his back and still uh, use it you need to be holding it oh, yourself right. yeah mm-hmm I was going to use that as a fail safe in case anyone saw it to just blind them quickly and we could just squeeze it. <laughs> oh, a, 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 that'd be sweet. A flashbang bra- flash grenade. <laughs> yeah. Flashbang squeezy. Yeah. <laughs> flashbang squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like men in black. <laughs> as a I do visual. like this idea of, of equipping squeeze, squeezy with things. <laughs> Is there anything else we can strap to him? <laughs> Utility squeeze. <laughs> yeah, I have a small knife. Can I just strap that to his back so he looks more intimidating? <laughs> I mean that you could do because that's just tying things onto him. But he could always poke someone's ankle if it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a battle bot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can go around slashing Achilles tendons. Uh, that's awesome. Oh yeah. fuck yeah! I'm gonna Definitely. do that. All right, we're strapping a knife to his back. <laughs> no, you should do it the on way- like the front or the side somewhere. Where oh yeah, actually. yeah. And now if, you, if we run into people back here and be like, "Wait, was that a weasel? Wait, was that weasel wearing a top hat?" And did he have a knife? <laughs> <laughs> how how are you gonna lash this knife onto his? Uh, I mean, I have rope. Is that? Yeah. I mean, rope, rope's yeah. like thick. You're right. That yeah. won't work. That's like uh, really fine. Thick. We'll just send in naked Screezy. 
with a top Things hit. go top poorly, hat. though. Oh, yeah, he's top making a top hit. And Rogue, yeah. right? Weren't you Rectroning him? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're putting a little little cape on him, and then we're sending him okay. in. I give him a little so, pat on the butt, and I'm like, go squeeze. Yeah. He doesn't really move because he's currently under your oh. control from the... <laughs> okay. Well, I push forward and then tap him on the butt. <laughs> okay. That works. <laughs> you tap him on the butt, and in no way related to that, he starts moving forward. <laughs> For the so you guys, so you guys wave the card key and the g- door glows blue again and unlocks and you open it a little bit and you send in uh, Screezy. So uh, I think Screezy has like a hundred yard range, if I remember correctly. And so he walks in and you're in a very large hall- hallway that's like basically metal on all sides, like kind of like aluminum paneling. Um, and the hallway seems to go down pretty far, like maybe 50 yards, and there's another door on the far end, and it appears that there's a couple little um, alcoves on the way to the uh, the door on the far side, but you can't quite tell what it is because it's, like, built into the walls. Okay. All right, well, let's drive Squeezy forward, and let's just do a little, like, peek around the corner at each of these alcoves to see okay. what we can see. So you walk down like 25 yards and there's a uh, a door. Scurry. A, uh, sorry? He scurries down. Sorry, he scurries down the hallway. <laughs> and uh, you come to the first alcove, which is on your right, and you look down and there's another hallway that leads down like uh, 50 yards to a, like a very large metal door on the end. Okay. And then I, there's more in front of you. Do they look like they have key card access? From this from this distance, you can't really tell. Hmm. He's low def screen, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I basically like to just do a sweep and check all the alcoves to just make sure there's nobody currently in here before we head in. Okay, sounds good. So you keep going down, and there's another. There's an actual door on your left this time. And this is basically like you've gone like 75 yards through the tunnel at this point on the way to the far end. Um, And the one on the left is just a closed door with a single key card thing next to it. And it says uh, a storeroom on it. Oh. And is that the last alcove? Uh, It's the last alcove, but then there's also the door on the far side uh, that you haven't quite gotten to yet. Okay, cool. I mean, I feel like the coast is clear for us to head in. Yeah. yeah, let's go. Store mm-hmm. Yeah, you haven't seen anyone. Maybe that's where they store the prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe or... that's where they sell the store or the rooms. So... <laughs> A store for rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it might right, also so... have better disguises in it than what we currently have. Maybe, yeah. I guess that would be the room store. Maybe it's the gift shop where they sell the uh, crystals. <gasps> oh, these are all very good options you guys are coming up with. <laughs> let's keep thinking of more. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Let's let's go in the door. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys uh, open the door and uh, enter, and uh, you're looking down the long hallway, and you can see Screezy like 70 yards away from you, standing at the storeroom door. Should yeah. we see who's right about what's behind the storeroom door? Sure. Yes. Let's store let's room creep number one. Okay. So you guys uh, walk all the way down, and uh, you reach the door on the left. And um, from this distance, you can also see the door on the far side. Um, It just says uh, Elixir Shop. And then you're currently standing at the storeroom. Montgomery? (laughs) (laughs) Who did not die. (laughs) Maybe. Oh, uh, no, he's dead. <laughs> Maybe uh, he has a twin brother. Yeah. Yeah. And we can just call him Montgomery. Like yeah. in Beer Fest. Beer Fest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you want to go in the store room? Yeah. yeah. I pick up Screes, right. put him in my pocket. Okay. You put him back in his holster. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so uh, you I spin him around my you... finger before I do any... <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, scree! <laughs> that works pretty well because he's still pretty like stiff and robotic. So it's like Perfect. spinning a pen around your finger. Or a gun. <laughs> All right. So you uh, you swipe the key card in front of the door and it opens up and you walk inside. And there's a bunch of shelves with uh, like jars full of liquid uh, sitting on the shelves. 
and there's some like there's some boxes strewn about on the ground, but it looks like to be a, a storeroom that's holding mostly like liquid jars. Hmm. Do they have labels on them? Yeah, a lot of them have like um, spice names and stuff like that. Like it says like sage or orange or cinnamon and stuff like that. Um, there's some more peculiar ones that say like speed or random verbs <laughs> and stuff like that. Posh, scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. I would like, so. I guess maybe this is just literally the storeroom for the elixir shop next door. Yeah, that seems likely. Okay. Well, should well, we check out the elixir shop? <laughs> one of those has a useful name, if it's speed. Like, is there any other ones that seem like they'd be useful? Can we just pocket some of these? Yeah. Um, like power? Strength? You also <laughs> see one that says invisibility in quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> huh. Is this a, a King Solomon situation? Is that what it was? Is it King Solomon Explain. who gets the invisible clothing? <laughs> was it King Solomon? The emperor wears no clothes? Is that what it Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyone up for a gamble? <laughs> what are you? It's like sure. powder? It's liquid. Oh. It's like a uh, you drink it. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should grab it and bring it into the elixir shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we could do that. We Store. could just pocket it and hold it for later. Yeah, let's grab the speed one and the invisibility one and bring them into the elixir store shop room. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. So you, uh, but we'll say that you, you have some little, like, jars on you that could be part of your kit or something else. So you, you empty a little bit of those two liquids into, like, some smaller jars because these are, like, pretty big like like gallon jars and stuff. Oh, okay. And oh. you're able to to take a little bit with you. Okay. All right. And do we want to peek into the elixir store first, like with Screezy, or do you want to just go for it? What does it say on it? Elixir shop? Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, if we're dressed as Rectrons, I guess we can just go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. Okay, let's go into the elixir shop. Okay. So I have my key card. Cool. So you uh, you exit the storeroom and go into the elixir shop and you swipe your key card in front of it and uh, you walk in and you're basically in like the what appears to be like a kitchen of a um, bar more or less and so there's a bunch of like cauldrons and things surrounding you and you can kind of see um, around a corner in front of you there's like the actual bar area. And there's a man standing there uh, cleaning glasses. And uh, he <laughs> hears the door open and he looks behind himself at you guys. And he says, uh, excuse me, can I help you guys? It's like, I wasn't expecting anybody to be coming in this early. Never too early for some elixirs, especially during the festival, am I right? It's like, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, do you actually do you want me to actually prepare something for you? I do. Yes. Okay. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, 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 Chef special. <laughs> okay. Well, the uh, what what we were gonna make today is the actual uh, special for the bar was the uh, tree sap cocktail. So. I can I can whip that up for you. He's like I wasn't expecting anybody to be coming into the bar from there until like eleven. It's like what what's your what's your purpose here? Are we early? Yeah. What time is it? It's about ten. Oh, I don't know if you've heard that uh, time is a social construct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we must. Uh, it's the uh, wagon lag. Jet lag it must be all off on our time schedules. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see him specifically looking at Yenri right now. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's never too early for a drink, right? We just kind of decide we come and hang out for a bit till everyone else shows up at eleven. Roll a deception check. Okay. 
Ooh. That's an eight. Okay. He, uh, the bartender, like, squints his eyes at you, and, like, he reaches for his arm, and he pulls up his sleeve, and you see uh, the blue insignia of the Rectrons on his arm. He's like, can I see your symbol, please? Of course. And uh, I use prestidigitation to make that same symbol on my arm. That's one of the things that's prestidigitation is you can make a color, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object or surface. Ooh. So I'm going to make that exact symbol that he's showing me on my arm and lift up my sleeve. Okay. You, uh, you do that, and so you, you pull up your sleeve, and just as your, your clothing kind of moves, moves past that part of your arm, the uh, symbol appears on your skin, and you show him, and um, he seems satisfied, and he pulls his, his sleeve down. He's like, okay, okay, sorry about that. I was just getting a, a weird feeling. You know, you can't be uh, too careful with the festival going on. No, no, I get it. It's totally fine. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll mix you guys up a few drinks here. And so you he uh, goes to the bar, and he mixes up a few drinks for you really quickly and brings them over. He's like... To the Rectrons, boys. To the Rectrons. To the Rectrons. To the Rectrons. And he uh, he cheers with you. He made one for himself, and he downs it pretty quickly. <laughs> and you guys taste yours, and it tastes a little, like, piney. Hmm. Do we feel anything? No, not really. Just, uh, like, maybe a teeny bit of a buzz after drinking it, but nothing uh, unusual. Let's go again. Let's go again. <laughs> 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 I uh can we like convene on the side of the bar to have a quick aside? Yeah. Yeah, so you guys okay. like walk into the bar to uh, a table and just sit down and he continues just like cleaning glasses and stuff like that. Okay. And we say thank you. Mhm. And he bows at you. Um I I assume he means 11 a.m. people are showing up or does you think he means tonight cuz like we could wait around to see if other electrons show up. That also really increases our chances of getting caught, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I assume he means an hour from now. Yeah. I was also wondering if maybe he has a key card, because that, is that the only way in here? Uh, no there's, a main, yeah. there's a main door to the bar. Oh, so this is like the back entrance? Yep, exactly. But also, he has to have a key card if he has to go to the stock room, you know? Yeah. Yeah, probably. The room so going like, back and forth. Should we kill him? <laughs> <laughs> It's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, should we murder? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. But or, like, knock him out. <laughs> we haven't murdered in a while. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, or, what does he look like, by the way, the bartender? Um, he's just, like, a, like a tall, blonde human. Ah. I was wondering if one I, of us... I mean, I guess you could maybe use your spell to look like him and impersonate him, couldn't you? If we, like, knocked him out, could someone take his place? I don't know if I could change that, like, size that much. Here, just to let you know with, like, disguised self, you can make yourself his height, but if someone was to, like, put their hand through the top of Puff's head, it would just go through the illusion. So you can't create, Who's like... Who's gonna be touching my head? I'm, I'm just saying that that's, like, you, you actually can make yourself look taller, but there's no, <laughs> yeah. like, physical mass that appears. It's, it's purely can an illusion. Can he basically make himself look just like someone if he's got... Mm -hmm. If he knows what the person looks like? It looks look like just, I can, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, hey, let's do that. All that right. Seems like a good way to get some intel, huh? I guess we could also tie him up like in the movies or we could murder him those are our two <laughs> options <laughs> no i think like knocking him out and tying him up we yeah need i don't throw, throw we him need in the store to murder yeah oh that's why there's a storeroom <laughs> <laughs> to store the body <laughs> <laughs> all right who wants to do the honors of knocking him out i got this so I go back up to the bar and say, uh, can I get another one of those piney drinks? Like, yeah, I guess it's uh, five o'clock somewhere, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> always. And so he turns around to a cauldron and he starts uh, muddling up the ingredients to make the tree sap cocktail. So now is there a bar between me and him? Yeah, there is a bar between you and him. Okay. Are you going to have one with me? 
It's like, no, nah. it's like, I got, I got to work, man. It's like, I already had one with you. So, uh, oh, just, come on. just, just one for you. You can't tell me you're feeling it already. He's like, I'm a, I'm a professional. All right. I'm waiting for him to bring me my drink. Okay, so he uh, he finishes it up and he comes to the bar and he uh, hands you uh, the drink across the bar. And I say, cheers. And I hold it up towards him. And he uh, just nods at you and he gives you just a finger gun and says, cheers. <laughs> and I tap it on the bar and then splash it in his face. So with my other hand, I grab the back of his head and slam his face down on the bar, if I can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Roll uh, attack roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> is it just raw? Yeah. Uh, Plus strength, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, this is, I guess this is kind of like a grapple. So this is a, that's an eight. An eight? Okay. Uh, so you reach out to try and grab his head and shove it at the bar and he like very skillfully moves his head out of the way and he stands there and he's like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> uh, I thought I saw something. Yenry Puff! <laughs> <laughs> and he yells, who? And he, he gets like this like wide eyed look in his, his eyes right now. And oh, he um Jesus. he starts looking at you and he looks at Orc and um he starts running to the back of the bar back into the kitchen area. All right, I so uh roll roll initiative. <laughs> Five. Damn it. <laughs> wow, I'm rolling so bad. I know me too. Five. Ooh. Twenty. Two. Two? <laughs> <laughs> Is that with initiative? Added on? Oh, no, no, sorry. I for- always forget about that. Five. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have Yenri go first and Ork go second. Um, so first is Puff. So this guy's like hightailing it back. You're like... Is he running to the door or is he run- he's, is like, he's he's running, running like back a- kind of behind the bar into the kitchen area? Ah. So like, yeah, toward towards that door. Um... I think I'm just gonna cast magic missile on him. Oh. And hit him hit him in the back. Okay. Roll that uh, damage. So that's four. Three. Four. So, okay. Uh, eleven. All right. So next is the uh bartender. So he gets you uh release the magic missiles from the hand and it goes and it hits him in the back and you hear him cry out a little bit as they explode on him. And um he stutters a little bit, but he keeps running to the back. And uh, Orc, you're at the bar here, so you see him run back towards the door, and he presses a finger on an intercom next to oh. the door, and he yells, "I need backup at the elixir shop." He's like, "I'm being, I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked." Wah. Uh, I should have done my other thing that I was gonna do. <laughs> Can we rewind? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So yeah, and you you hear some like muffled voices come up on the intercom and like talk back to him. Okay, whose turn is it? Uh sorry, it's uh Yenry next. Okay. Um ugh. I just want to knock him out. So uh can I just run up and try to like jump on his back while he's like uh using this intercom and try to grapple him? So you're a little bit too far away to run all the way to him at the intercom because oh, like okay. he's like 40 feet away from you and your speed's like 25. Okay. Well, then I'm going to touch Orc uh, and use Enhance Ability and give him uh, Bull's Strength, which I think will help with attack rolls. It helps with strength rolls in general. Does that count for attacks and things? I wanted to be able to just like knock the hell out of him in his next turn, <laughs> or yeah, like yeah. I could do like a sleeper hold. Yeah, that too. Which, which is that strength, Eric? When you do like grappling? Yes, it is. Okay, then yeah, I'll give you bull's strength, so you have a uh, advantage on strength checks, and your carrying capacity doubles. Okay. Cool. Woo. Okay. Wait, so I have advantage? You said on strength? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I should note that in, like, the rules, really the only way to knock someone out is to drop their hit points to zero. You can't, like, choke or hold them or oh, really? do whatever. Yeah. So that that's, like, how you knock someone unconscious. Okay. Oh. 
Well, I have no idea how. Maybe you can just hold him still, and we just stab him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can I can rage and use double attack. Yeah. Do that. Too. Well, that might do it. <laughs> I don't and know how strong this bartender is. But Orc, I'm you're assuming. next. <laughs> uh, oh boy, poor guy. Um, so, how far away is he? Uh, from you, he's like fifteen feet. Oh, okay, perfect. Just like uh, uh, across the bar, yeah, to, towards the door. All right. Well, then I will rage. Okay. And hop the bar and uh, extra attack with my great axe. The okay. Bartender. You are able to do that. So roll for attack twice. All right. So first one. Oh, nat 20. Okay. Well, roll <laughs> for damage, and you get to double your attack damage and then add your proficiency. Oh, Jesus. Oops. Oh. So that first one's a 12, and then second attack. So 12, 12 total? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't a super high roll. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Second one is a 17. Okay. Plus my attack bonus. So more that than, hits. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 damage. 15 damage? Okay, <laughs> so you you double whack him with this great axe as he's standing at the intercom, and it just kind of like clubs him in the head twice, and he just goes down, and he, <laughs> he passes out. <laughs> you see him laying on the ground. Um, and then you, you hear over the intercom, he's like, we're sending 10 men to your location right now. Hold tight. All right. Uh, Here's my first thought. We could, we have very little time to figure this out. Yes. I'm going to drag him, I don't know, to the kitchen and then You're basically hide him. in we're, the kitchen We're right in the now. kitchen. Oh, we're all in there now? Well, well yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are with oh, the bartender. Okay. Well, then I'll it's shut a, the it's door. It's an open I'll... floor plan. <laughs> 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 I guess I'll see if I can hide the body, Puff become the bartender, yes, and maybe pretend that you're passed out on the floor. Or, yeah, or okay. come back and respond to the intercom and say they just ran out the back door and are heading elsewhere. That we can prevent ten men from coming here. That's true. Can he sound like him? I, I think that's uh, part of this guy's self. Maybe, probably. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty good at impressions, so <laughs> <laughs> do Robert De Niro. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like half of a Robert De Niro impression is your face and just doing a big yeah. frown yeah. it doesn't say anything it doesn't say anything about your voice no well then yeah you could just dress up as him I'm, I'm gonna say yes because it's like magical disguise I also can you I could use my oh, wait. I, guess it, at I just looked up the rules it's actually it's purely visual Oh, okay, but I can also use uh, um, minor illusion to say it can be your voice, someone else's voice, a lion's roar, beating of drums, blah 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 blah. Oh, oh, and that is so a cantrip. Can... That's a dope spell. Okay, <laughs> I like so that. So wait, can you can you use that as much as you want? Like yeah. just keep yeah. doing it every, yep. every time you talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you just uh. have to like mouth along with your <laughs> 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 You're like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a bad uh, Chinese film. <laughs> you're you're yeah, basically Kung Fu film. bad overdubbing your own yeah. overdubbing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I could also Puff could just give up talking using his mouth and he could just use minor illusion all the time. Yeah. yeah. Save that jaw. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. Um, okay. I am going to disguise myself and then I'm gonna use minor illusion. To, I'm going to click the intercom and use Minor Illusion to have the bartender's voice say, uh, they just ran out the back. Uh, hurry, they're getting away. All right, back. roll a deception Where's check. <laughs> what? Roll. Where's the back? I don't know. That's what Dylan said. <laughs> roll, roll, a, roll a deception check. <laughs> the front? <laughs> well, the back would be the door that we came through, and there's other doors out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. As long as they had key cards. Yeah. All right. Whoa, shit. I mean, they're Rectrons. They're Rectrons. Uh, that is, uh, what did you say? Deception or what am I doing? Uh, a deception check, yep. Uh, 21. Oh. Okay. So he uh, comes over the intercom and he's like, So which what direction did they go? Did they go to the Boggle Field? 
I use minor illusion again and say, yes, they ran to the boggle field. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're coming to the elixir shop at once, and we'll go through the door back there. We'll see you soon. All right, that means they're coming to us. Or to the so boggle field. we still field. need to... I'm going to... Search him for a key card. Key. Oh, yeah, I will. You should hide, too, Henry. Oh, yeah. Do you, see if, do you want to go to the storeroom with the body? Isn't that the direction they're going to head? I guess we could. Uh, generally, that direction, yeah. I or mean, you just, could you guys just hide in the kitchen? Cause yeah, gonna I just want to hide in the through. kitchen just in case they're going to search. Then, uh, oh, then sure, sure, sure. Puff, Puff can let us know. Wait, so is this plan that I'm going to stay out here? Yes. And talk to them? Yeah. <sighs> I hope this doesn't... <laughs> 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 what I'm, I hope this doesn't turn into the same situation that happened at the last bar that we got yeah. hoodwinked in. Very and I was like, I was like, go that way. And they were like, okay, come with us. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Puff, Puff's our best negotiator. Yeah. <laughs> got that fill of her tongue. <laughs> All right. This is a repeat um, of last time. All right. <laughs> can I can I use uh uh Dylan? Yeah. Uh sorry, Yenry. Yeah. What is what is it that you just used to make the uh um symbol? What did you, yeah, the symbol. Can Pre you make a wound on me? So uh, that like when they come in, they're yeah. not gonna wanna just like grab me and take me with them. Yeah, I can do I'll do a couple of things for you. <laughs> I don't I'll hit you for real. Yeah. I don't know because I don't I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I'll make a wound. Yeah. <laughs> I got a one you never your ask. Idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if it, quick when, hit me over the head. When he does this guy's <laughs> self, can can he make the image the uh, like the the symbol on his arm as well? I mean, disguise oh, yeah. self is purely visual. I think he could just disguise self with a uh, wound. On with with wound, yeah, yeah, I think he could do oh, it. Oh, okay. Himself. With so, arm tattoo and wound and wounds. Yeah, so you're do already, all of that. You're already doing all of that, so okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like. It's obviously magical, so it's instant, but I like to think that Puff's in the corner, like, putting on his makeup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's Puff's my like, motivation quick, punch here? me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you have magic. All right. <laughs> this will be my greatest performance yet. <laughs> <laughs> the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, yeah. the, teeth, <laughs> the teeth, the tip of the tongue. <laughs> Only I'm, I'm just, I'm doing that, but doing minor illusion and making the guy's voice say it. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you were saying that in your lispy lizard voice. The lip, the teeth, the tip the of the lip, tongue. The lip, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm ready. Lizard voice. Yeah. All right. So you okay. use minor illusion and suddenly you see uh, like uh, Puff materialize into the bartender. And so he's now a, a tall blonde man with a symbol on his arm and a, a scar on his forehead. And we go hide in the kitchen. And okay. say, break a leg. <laughs> but not like, you know, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been a better illusion. A broken leg. Yeah. Yeah. They can't take me with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you guys are you guys are just shattered. hiding in the kitchen with the bartender. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can we look around? Is there any good spot to like hide under a counter? Are there any like bins of flour? Or <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like um, it's a bunch of wooden and steel shelves. There's like a big table in the middle. There's cauldrons over like fires, but there's not really anything to like hide behind. And it's a pretty small too big. kitchen. And there's like the the doorway back into the storeroom area in the big hallway, basically. Well, we have a little bit of invisibility. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> worst comes to worst, we try out that elixir. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so should we just take some invisibility now? <laughs> See what happens? Yeah, I mean, I don't know where else we could hide. Yeah, Unless, either that or we have to like go out the front door and try to hide out there, but they might be coming through soon. So yeah, it's I probably think that's where they're gonna be that. busting in. Yeah, or we could run all the way back into the hookah lounge, but they're gonna be on our tail. That's where they think we're going. Right. Yeah. Okay. You'd just be running. It's like running along a falling tree. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing exactly what we told them we're doing. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Let's take this quick. We don't have time. Let's yeah, see what happens. Take a sip of invisibility. We pop okay. the vial. So you you guys both take it, all three of us. I yes. pour some in the bartender's mouth. You put it in the bartender's mouth. Okay, so you um, <laughs> he just coughs it down. <laughs> you each you each um, take a, a a sip of it, 
and um, you feel your body start to tingle a little bit. And then um, mm-hmm. you're all looking forward and you start to see like the room seem to grow like bigger in front of you. And um, so Puff, you're looking at them and you see them all start to shrink. <laughs> are their clothes staying? Or are their clothes shrinking? Their their clothes are not shrinking. <laughs> or, sorry, oh, oh shit! No, no, sorry. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. He's like, yes, their 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 clothes are shrinking with them. So they're okay, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they get to be about like three inches high, and they're standing <laughs> on the floor of the kitchen now. <laughs> now use reduce. <laughs> <laughs> The fantastic voyage, <laughs> and I swallow them. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> How long does this last? <laughs> you, I don't oh, know. No. Yeah. <laughs> we just puff explodes <laughs> as we oh, burst out of his belly. I just realized you said that you were going to search him for a key card. Did we ever resolve that? We didn't do that yet. Okay. Well, Never now we'll have a tiny that. key card. Yeah, so we... <laughs> Thank you, we quickly run into the near a nearby hiding place. I'm assuming we can dive can hide into like, something or behind. You something. can hide like anywhere now. Yeah, a mouse hole, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm gonna go in my house. Yeah, in my mouse house. <laughs> so there is like you guys. You guys look around. There is actually like a small hole in the wood at the bottom uh, of the kitchen. <laughs> you best be careful if that mouse is home. Yeah, you guys are in for a rough battle. And if yeah. we know anything about mice, they like to go in their houses, so it might be home. That's <laughs> all right. We'll just watch Mystery Mice, and yeah. it'll be a good time. <laughs> Ten minutes will pass, and the danger will leave. <laughs> that was a good movie. What were we doing? <laughs> okay, right, we run in the hole. Okay, you guys run out of sight. You go in, you're basically just in like a, a, a dark hole now, and you can see out into the kitchen through this this hole, and you uh, you drag the bartender in with you. Okay. So a couple minutes pass, and then you hear a knock on the main door, and in bursts like 10 Rectrons, so they run up to the bar, and uh, Puff is standing there, uh, disguised as the bartender, and they say, where, where are they? Where did they go? Uh, yeah, and I kind of have my head down. Because I'm hurt, so they can't see me. And I use minor illusion to make the guy's voice. And I'm like, yeah, they went that way. And I point towards the back door through the kitchen. Did they they went out through the, the secret door. Yeah, that door. Back in the, uh, the, the, one, the back secret door. Shit. And I just can't, uh, oh, I can't, I, they hit me pretty hard. So I can't, I don't know if I can go. <laughs> Shit. So if they went through there, it must mean they have a key card. God damn it. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go after them. Like, if you if you see anything else here, call over the intercom. Hey, check that. Uh, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got hit pretty hard. <laughs> All right. So they they run to the <laughs> the back and like they swipe their key card and they run through the door. All ten of them and they start giving chase down the hallway. <laughs> Apparently, I am a pretty good negotiator. <laughs> Oh yeah, there. Go do it. You got it. Okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure, there. <laughs> All right, so they uh, they disappear behind the main door, and you you hear footsteps disappear as they run down the hallway. And I go to the back door, and I push a chair up against the knob just in case they come back. Okay, <laughs> you do that. <laughs> I've always wondered how effective that move actually is. <laughs> Probably we'll not. Out. Doesn't seem like it do, does much. <laughs> it's like a lever. Yeah. The more you push, the more pressure. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So we, they... I want to check the mini bartender for the for a key card. Okay. <laughs> you shove your teeny tiny hands into his teeny tiny pockets. And uh, search around, and you pull out a, another blue key card. Yeah! So now you have two pass cards, key cards, whatever I call them. And I pull, a, I pull a wig out of my disguise kit and put it on my head, and I go, Hey, Orc, look, I'm Ariana Pequeño. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> At first, I thought it was just because of the wig. I was like, why? Because, oh. because like we're small. Because you're pequeño. Because we're like small. Real small. <laughs> <laughs> You guys want to take a ride in my pocket? Because I don't know how long this is going to last for. Where are we going? I don't know. Forward? We got a What what do we do with this bartender? I don't know. Leave him out on the ground? Leave him in the hole. Leave him in the hole. (laughs) Burst out of the wall later on. (laughs) So uh, as you guys are discussing this, you hear a uh, commotion behind you in the mouse hole. And you start hearing like a scurrying, and um, you see a little blue light um, appear and like move towards you in a weird like zigzaggy pattern, and it approaches you more. And suddenly you're standing there, and there's a mouse. There's a small mouse that's wearing like a little tunic, and it has a um, a tiny glowing crystal um, attached to a headband on its head. Uh, that's illuminating the area around you, and he starts squeaking at you. Is this a squeezy? Uh, I slip on my ring of animal speech. Oh yeah, that I got from Yay! Grim. Uh, so that I can talk with this secretive Nim esque mouse that just approached us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you uh put on your ring of animal speech, and I, I forget what are what are the actual um. Is it just you can talk to like any animal, or do you choose like a specific one? Uh, I'll look it up real quick. I don't I'm guessing it's just you can just speak to any animals. You gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. The knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence, but at minimum, beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Um, and it's ten minutes duration. Okay. Awesome. You uh, slip on your ring and you look at the mouse and he um, points his finger and he says, Halt, intruder! Why do you walk into my domain? I say, sorry, sorry. We're just hiding out from some, uh, some bad people who are trying to, to get us. My God, you speak the mouse tongue. <laughs> who are you, wizard? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, we apologize for the intrusion. Uh... Your Highness? You, <laughs> what, what is your name? Nay, I am no Highness nor King. I am but a peasant in this world, but I v- live in the village below the streets. It's like my name is Miles, and I am one of the Mouse Kingdom of Vanguard. Have you, mice, also harnessed the power of the Light Crystal? It's like, but of course, the Mouse Kingdom... I believe is more powerful than the world of you sky watchers. <laughs> and I use message up to puff and I say, yeah, we found a much more interesting story down here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess Orc How? can't understand any of this, can he? No, no, I was just thinking, I'm watching you guys squeak at each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to join. Is there more invisibility? Probably. Uh, or you can, can't you reduce yourself? Oh, I don't know if I can go that small. <laughs> Not that small. <laughs> that small. <laughs> but he's like, small. he's like two and a half feet. And he's like, I, I don't know. I could probably squeeze through this. He's, like an, o- he's like an is... octopus. He can just squeeze into any hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think our invisibility is teeny tiny now. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. The actual jar of it. The, the vials. The storeroom. Yeah, but... that's where the Rectrons are. That's true. Yeah, I don't want to go that way. Unless they ran all the way to the... Yeah. Well, uh, Miles... Uh, Again, we apologize for the intrusion. We're just hiding out for a short amount of time. But uh, you've also made me very curious about this mouse world now. It's like, uh, and and my, I am fascinated by you. We have yet to see anyone resembling your your Skywatcher look. I, I do not know how you've become to be here and how you speak our tongue. My king would be fascinated to meet you. Oh, and we would be fascinated to meet him. Um... So, Orc, this is Miles. Uh, he's a mouse. And he's sort of invited us to meet his king. Is this a side quest we want to do? Okay. Yeah, I'm on board. Before I go- you guys do this, let me just say, 
I think that I should go back to the storeroom and get a buttload more invisibility because if you guys run out <laughs> oh yeah and you're down in Mouse City you will destroy Mouse City and die <laughs> <laughs> If there's one thing we've learned, it's that we have an aptitude for destroying cities. So, yeah. <laughs> is, is Puff is Puff just listening with his ear against the hole in the wall and like <laughs> shouting into the hole? <laughs> but all he can do is squeak. What? <laughs> his, his, his booming Puff voice. Yeah. yeah. You will destroy my city. <laughs> <laughs> what is this omen? <laughs> Not a premonition. But for real, I think I should. Uh, I think I should go get some more and then okay. join you guys. Because also, I don't want to not be part of this. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I, of course you want. I just twiddle my thumbs in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea if there's going to be any sort of like, uh, uh, what am I looking, what's the word I'm looking for? Repercussions? Sort, sort of head <laughs> <laughs> forewarning that we're going to start to grow again. Oh, yeah. yeah. At this point, you, we don't really, you don't don't really know. You don't know. Yeah. We also, I guess, don't know if you're already small and you take more. Do you get even smaller? Smaller. Yeah. <laughs> we seem to like. And we can go to flea. We can go to flea city of Vanguard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we... How have you come to be here? <laughs> you speak the flea tongue. <laughs> Archer city is much more powerful than Mouse City. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> then those oh cheese eaters <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god how can we care about the rectrons anymore yeah <laughs> when you inceptioned your way into small town yeah <laughs> gain a lot of perspective this way yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, I'll I'll message and relay that information to Puff and say you should probably go get some quote unquote invisibility and come join us down here. Okay, I would like to go out to the storeroom. Wait, here, take this bartender and just set him down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I take him. <laughs> okay, you 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 pick him up by his little shirt and he's hanging comically like. And him. I put him between my two fingers. And squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> oh my God. Problem solved. <laughs> but take Holy care of this, shit. and you just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> the deed is done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's me, and I'm not gonna do that. Uh, okay. Can I? I want to go to the storeroom now. Okay. So you uh, wave your card key in front of the door, um, and it unlocks. Cool. I go to the storeroom. Okay, you go through the door and then you unlock the storeroom and go in, and there's no Rectrons in there. Um, I so how many? Hmm? Yeah, how many vessels do I have to like carry the stuff? Look at your it's, what, what's in your uh, your your item equipment. menu. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I said that well, you guys probably just have a couple small bottles from like random stuff. Everyone it's has funny, a water yeah. skin, right? And like a yeah. mess kit. I have yeah. an explorer's pack that probably has that stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, assume. It's funny when you say how many bottles do you have. I immediately thought of like Ocarina of Time. Like, yeah, the, you can have That's like four bottles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Got to dump out a fish to make room. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some lawn lawn. Yeah, I do. Ha- I do. Chris have a has fish. done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a fairy. I have a. I have a fairy and a yeah. Yeah. Fish. You are yeah, but, yeah, but you're you fairy are li- dead. <laughs> you're just a really grotesque version of Link. You have blonde hair and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Link really let himself go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kept a fairy in the bottle so long it you, died. You yeah. like Majora Mask like halfway in between a Goron and Link, basically. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty oh, accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet. Um, okay. Well, you're able to get uh, two small vials of invisibility potion. Perfect. Uh, and then I head back to the uh, kitchen, go through the doors. Okay. What are you doing with the bartender? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll put, I'll place him in the storeroom. Mm-hmm. Under, <laughs> I want to put him like on the shelf, like four shelves <laughs> up. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, just so when he, it'll just be funny. 
<laughs> he, won't get, he won't be get seriously hurt. It'll just be like a lot of, you know, shattering and stuff. Glass. Um, yeah. And then I uh, go outside and I put a chair against the doorknob. <laughs> 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 of, of the storeroom yeah, yeah. Well, guess, you, you guys like took his key card i don't think he can actually unlock the door anyway but yeah you, oh, put, is a, there a, you put a chair against the door knob. but is it like you have to use a key card to get out of the storeroom that's a good question i didn't really think that seems like that. a really bad security system <laughs> yeah just lock it's like the out. walk-in freezer that you get stuck in yeah <laughs> um yeah, we'll see. But no, I I'll just leave him in there. It doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah. Okay. You you leave him in there, and then you go back into the kitchen. All right. And I drink some invisibility. All right. You you drink it, and you see the same thing where the room starts looking like it's getting bigger around you, and realize you're shrinking down, and uh, eventually you're like two and a half inches tall, and you're uh, standing uh, at the kitchen in front of the mouse hole. I go in his house. Yeah, <laughs> you you walk in the door and you see uh, Yenry and Orc standing there, and you see the uh, mouse that looks like a an old timey minstrel or something like that. He's wearing like a tunic, and uh, has this uh, headband on his head with a little glowing blue crystal that's illuminating the area around you. And he starts squeaking at you, and uh, Yenry, you hear him, and he just said, "My stars, it's another one." He's like, "Is this one with you as well?" Yes, it is. Miles, this is Puff, and I am Yenry, and this is Orc. Puff, Yenry, Orc, I am very pleased to officially meet you all. Please, let's make haste into the Mouse Kingdom. Fuck yeah. Onward. What are we doing, Yenry? Uh, we're going. Uh, yeah, what's up? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah. So <laughs> we're going to follow this guy, Miles, the mouse, to meet the king of mice, I don't know why this is useful, but I can't pass up the opportunity. <laughs> no. Sounds hey, dope. there might be some mouse rectrons. You never know. Do they have a mouse festival of light? I haven't asked yet. Oh, Miles, do you have a mouse festival of light? <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not know what this festival of light is. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, I was hoping Mouse Amander Man was playing. Mouse <laughs> <laughs> Amander Man. It's just exactly the Sal- same as everything. Salamander renamed. mouse. Yeah. yeah. Salamander mouse. <laughs> Kills all the small salamanders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>